Hello YouTube viewers. Uh, today I am in the process of adding Kevlar skid plates to my 16 foot Prospector Novacraft canoe. As you can see uh, before I decided to do this video for you, I uh, started the process of actually laying it out on the canoe. Uh, what you can see I've done here already is I've already measured. Uh, I measured up 10 inches from the bow of the canoe, put a mark there, and I laid out my Kevlar strip in the position that I wish to have it. And then I proceeded to tape around it. Uh, this is uh, going to give me my guide so when I remove the Kevlar and I do my sanding, I'll have my area where I can actually do my sanding. If you come to the back of the canoe, you'll actually see that I've already removed the Kevlar strip. And in removing the Kevlar strip, I trimmed around the tape to make sure that uh, that's the area that I'm going to have. So this area here now is ready for sanding. So I'm going to uh, pause here for a moment. I'm going to proceed and then I will uh, get some footage of me actually sanding using a sandy or uh, a 60 grit sandpaper. And uh, you want to sand right to the very edge of the tape, uh, being sure not to disturb the tape, but you also want to make sure that uh, you get right to the edge so that you get good adhesion with your epoxy. Okay, so here I am now. I'm getting ready to trim this end. I've uh, the, the tape I've got at the end of my Kevlar strip, you can see I've drawn a line around. This is the line I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to, uh, to cut. That's at the fat end. And if you come down here, you'll see I've got the same down here at the narrow end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to cut here with my X-Acto blade. I'm going to try and hold the camera here steady while I do this. Uh, and then you can see actually what I'm doing here, the process, uh, just to get rid of that material. Now that, that uh, line is about the same distance as the tape strip that goes down the side of the Kevlar. And that is basically going to be, yeah, I, I've done it at approximately a quarter of an inch. So... This is going to match up and kind of get around here, my other hand, the other way. And uh, part of me, if this is shaky, like I say, I'm trying to do this one handed. I should try to incorporate uh, <laughs> my daughter's services to maybe do a little videotaping for me while I'm doing this. So, as you can see, I'm just following that uh, drawn line that I've drawn. Don't want to go too deep. You don't want to cut in right through your. Uh... And I'm just gonna. Now I've, I've taken the time too because I'm I'm kind of particular in the way I do things here, but I've uh, made sure I measured from side to side to make sure my my tape lines are all right even on both sides so that I, you know, I don't get a funky uh, angle of my, my Kevlar. If you take a look here, you see that it's nice and straight up the, uh, up the canoe. Everything's nice and even. So I'm going to peel off the tape and uh, I'll get you next time here at the sanding process. Okay, now that I've got my, uh, both my ends here are all taped off and everything's looking good there and I'm happy with the way everything's taped off, you can see here. Uh, what I'm going to do next, my next process here, is I've got some uh, 60 grit sandpaper. Just a small piece to work with. I find it's easier to work with a smaller piece. And I'm just going to uh, proceed to sand down this whole area. You want to make sure you get a, a nice uh, rough surface on here. Because you want to really make sure that that uh, epoxy is going to adhere to the... Uh, to this Royal X or Royal Light material. Uh, you want to make sure you don't get right into the edge. So I'm just going to proceed here. Uh, you can see here how it's scuffing up nicely. But I'm going to make sure it's really well scuffed. You don't want to miss any areas because you want to make sure that epoxy really sticks. So I'm going to uh, proceed here. Uh, don't want to bore you with like a 20 minute sanding job but uh, once I get both uh, ends sanded I will show you uh, what the next step is. Alright, so 
After about a half an hour of, uh, of sanding, uh, using that 60 grit sandpaper, uh, being careful not to rip the edges of the tape, there were a couple nicks that I put in the tape, but uh, I, just, uh, I just patched them up. Uh, you can see one kind of right here. I put a couple little nicks in there because unless you have uh, the hands of a surgeon, you, uh, you know, you're probably going to end up with a couple of nicks in there, and that's not a problem. What I did too uh, in the sanding process, I wanted to make sure there were no shiny spots, so I used a, a, a dry rag here just to, to wipe off all the dust to make sure that uh, everything, all the dust came off and making sure that there's no shiny spots. Here's the other end of the canoe, same thing. My next step is I'm going to be uh, taping, uh, sorry for the music in the background, I got a phone call coming in, but uh, I'm going to be taping uh, my drip paper on there and I'll show you the steps after that. Okay, so now we're at the mixing part of uh, the epoxy. This is the uh, hardener, which is a part B, and this is part A, which is the, uh, the actual epoxy itself. As you can see on um, both, I've marked the halfway points on the bottles so that uh, I know how much to pour per pour. It's a two to one ratio, and that's why one bottle is eight, and one bottle is four ounces. Uh, I'm gonna be pouring that into my cup, mixing it up, and I've done a little dry run here with my, uh, with my mat, uh, Kevlar matting. One side of the matting is rough, and that is the side that goes down. The smoother part uh, kind of stays on top. And I just want to make sure everything's good before I start mixing epoxy because once it's mixed, it's mixed and it's done. Okay, so I got half the epoxy in and now I'm going to put in half the hardener. And say so you don't want to put too much, don't want to put too little, want to go to that line. Almost there. And just a touch more. And touch more and that's it so now I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and you don't want to mix too hard they say uh, you don't want to put too much air into it you don't want bubbles in there the bubbles uh, don't really make it work very well so we're just going to stir this up nicely now I'm going to apply epoxy and paint some on the uh, sanded area of the canoe And this is going to be like our sticky layer, our stick layer. Nice even coat all the way across. And you want to get right to the edge of where you've taped. You got a little, little bit of a thick layer on there. That's good because, like I say, you do want this to absorb right into uh, the matting or to the. Uh... I'm now going to take my matting. As I mentioned earlier, rough side down. And you do have a little bit of, uh, you can actually move it around a bit. And you want to make sure you got it centered on in your area here. Rub up any bubbles. Get it nice and tacked down to your area there. Now this uh, Kevlar will stretch a bit too. So you want to, like I say, you want to make sure it's in the right spot. As you can see, it's already stretching on me quite a bit. Which has got me in a spot here. All right, so at this point now, it's all nice, even, all the way around. I'm going to start applying the epoxy on top. I find the best way to do it is just to run a nice bead down the middle and work it in. You really want to saturate this, uh, at this point, you really want to saturate it. And you'll see it'll all start turning really dark. And that's what you want it to do. You want it to turn dark because that means that the, uh, the Kevlar felt is actually very saturated. And you want to make sure, hopefully, you got enough.
Alrighty, so here we are. Uh, I've uh, laid all the epoxy on, worked one end first. As you can see there, a nice even line all the way around, smoothed it out, made sure I got all the air bubbles out. It's rather tacky right now. Uh, it's going to probably take about 15, 20 minutes to start really setting. And uh, at that point, uh, once it comes fairly tacky, I will uh, start to remove the, uh, the paper protection because I don't have to worry about the epoxy running anymore. And come back here to the stern, you'll see the same thing. I worked on the bow first, and I finished, just finished this part here. Here again. Uh, some, some key areas I like to, uh, to really concentrate on is this area right in here. Uh, I found in past canoes that I've uh, put the skid plates on uh, over time because sometimes this epoxy doesn't really bond 100% uh, perfect to, uh, to a Royal X or an ABS plastic that uh, a bit of it will start to crack and uh, it'll want to lift there. If that ever happens to you uh, in the future, just buy yourself another epoxy kit, uh, like a, a small bottle of epoxy, two-part mix. Get it underneath and give it a good coat over top and uh, it'll hold it back down again. Uh, same goes over here, but it's not, uh, not so much because it doesn't really take a lot of wear and tear in this area here. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that area so much, but if you're going to concentrate on two areas, make sure you concentrate on them areas really good. Uh, more so because this is the stern of the boat or of the canoe you want to make sure that this area is well protected because you know you drag it up on shore and this area is going to catch on uh, on the shore rocks twigs branches sticks etc and over here on the front you're going to probably notice that eventually over time this is going to be your main wear area uh, as well as here but it all depends on what type of a canoe you are how much care you take uh, to your canoe or your vessel and getting it in and out of the water and things like that. So what we're going to do is uh, break away again and I'm just going to uh, let this sit and uh, cure up somewhat before I start to remove all the paper and everything and then uh, after that point after I remove the paper uh, and the, uh, the skid plates have thoroughly dried I might just uh, give them a light sanding there with that uh, 60 grit sandpaper just to get rid of some of the fluff balls that you might be able to see over here uh, just to smooth it out a bit you know, uh, just that's my own thing for aesthetics, trying to keep it uh, a little cleaner and, uh, you know, maybe flowing through the water a little easier when we're out paddling. So with that being said, we're going to sign out again, and uh, we'll talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, here we are once again. Uh, we're just at the step now where I've taken the paper off, and now I'm removing the uh, line of tape. I was going to do it all, but I just thought I would show you probably one of the better methods of taking the tape off to make sure that you end up with a nice, clean, smooth, hard line. And that's basically, when you get your tape going, you just want to peel off at an outward angle from, from where your, uh, the tape meets the, uh, the canoe. This stuff is really sticky with latex gloves. <laughs> and yeah, you just want to continue on around. That's going to give you a nice, clean, sharp line. Going all the way around, you can see how nice and clean that is. And of course the tape always wants to tear on you. So that'll just show you uh, basically that. Then like I say, I'm going to let this thing sit for uh, <laughs> a good day. And uh, tomorrow I'll come back and sand that. And uh, you know, or maybe sand it, maybe not, we'll see. We'll see how nicely it dries. And once it's dry, then I'm ready to hit the water. So for now, thank you for watching uh, my video. This is actually one of my first videos I've ever done. Uh, thought I would have some fun with it. Uh, did the best I can with uh, a one-handed GoPro here. Uh, did have the assistance for a few minutes of my daughter there to show the application, but that would be it. So from YouTube uh, land out there, this is Canoe Hound signing off. Uh, keep your paddles in the water and the wind at your back.